We know that many interactions online follow this client-server paradigm. Whether you're browsing the web or using other types of services, I have a client here and I have some sort of server that the client is connecting to to retrieve a web page, to translate a name, to send an email, to stream a movie or whatever. And this is a very sort of common paradigm on the modern web. On some level, you can think of cloud computing as sort of like the ultimate realization of the client server model where the server becomes more amorphous but also extremely powerful always online always available and the clients are allowed to become simpler lighter you know um, and and so and so forth so and and this is you know to some degree one direction that the internet seems to be heading on the other hand, there are people who are saying, wait, hold on a sec, there's a lot of agency that we have to give up and a lot of security and privacy in exchange for these cloud computing services that are operated by a small number of entities, whether they be companies or whatever. And, and we're not comfortable with that. And so remember, we had a client server model, but we've also successfully built services based on a peer-to-peer -peer model. Um, and, whether, and a lot of those services, unfortunately, at least in the early days of the internet, were sort of illicit. They were typically tended to be confined to things that people uh, didn't want to use the server for because whoever was hosting the server was worried about legal liability. But now what we're starting to see as the cloud emerges is people starting to say, hey, what if, can we design an internet where you know, all uh, of the interactions are fully distributed between the actual devices themselves. So if I wanted to uh, load a web page, for example, think about the things that I have to do to that. I have to translate a name. I can somehow use a network of connected devices that knows, someone will know what this particular name translates to, then I need to identify and retrieve the document. So rather than having that document be stored on some sort of centralized server, I can store pieces of the document or copies of the document throughout lots of machines. And as long as some of them are online, I can still retrieve the document by contacting them and, and retrieving the information. So from the perspective of a user, this model might actually seem pretty identical to what you would normally do. You open up a browser, you type something in the search bar, you get a document, you have different types of web services you can interact with, but there's no cloud. There's no uh, requirement that there be some sort of centralized server here. And this opens up a lot of new opportunities, particularly for people to collaborate and publish things together. So if I want to put up a website right now, what do I have to do? Well, I have to find somebody to host that content. That could be my university, it could be GitHub who's willing to do it for free, and there's people out there that are like, oh yeah, I'll host your website for free. You know, for example, GitHub, I can put up a static page, no problem. That's really nice of them to do, I guess. I mean, are they getting something out of it? Maybe they're getting something out of it. Maybe they get some branding, maybe they get you using their service or whatever. Um, but in a fully distributed web, it's much more easy to publish things because I don't need to get permission from some sort of powerful entity that runs these devices, or I don't need to be able to host the server myself. I'm just tapping into the collective computing power of all the different devices that are online. And so there's a lot of, there's a bunch of different um, people and different groups using different technologies out there exploring this space. So products like IPFS, uh, Blockstack, MadeSafe, you know, there's a lot of different groups that are trying to realize this vision of an internet that doesn't rely so much on this client server paradigm or on the all powerful cloud server that has a lot of security and privacy implications and instead just harnesses the collective power of all the different devices that are connected to it. And this would usher in, I think, a very different vision of the future of the internet. So it's interesting to see where these efforts will lead. There is an enormous amount of momentum and energy and force behind the cloud computing movement. And it's difficult to imagine that that's going to be fully derailed. But we might see the emergence of certain types of internet services that can run in a more distributed paradigm. And as long as you can provide the same type of experience to people, they don't care. It just becomes more easy to publish content and to do your own thing. So this might start to take hold on, uh, uh, among certain groups that are more interested in this type of thing. You know, the peer-to-peer -peer services are all already very popular within sort of the dark web community, but again, that's based on sort of illicit use. This argument that we're making for a more distributed internet is more about freedom and about the ability to publish things and not having to surrender ownership over data to large corporations or companies that operate the cloud.